As you wake up this morning, we want to bring in a man who was born and raised in the Peach State, even got his political start there, practicing law in Georgia. Joining us now, the executive director of the American Center for Law and Justice and a member of President Trump's legal team, Jordan Seculo. Good morning. Welcome back to the Good show. Morning. What happened? Uh, you know, I think there's you look at three things. Early voting was big, not as big, the absentee bit. It was not as big as the uh, November election, but that favored Democrats. We knew that. I think the, the early in-person voting probably uh, was not split as it usually is, like 50-50. I think Democrats may have won that. And then the big number. You know, I said on Newsmax yesterday, what Republicans were thinking, strategists were thinking, the top strategists across the country and in Georgia, was if, if there was 950,000-plus same-day votes total, these two Republican uh, senators would win. Well, there were 1.2 million plus same day votes. And while Republicans may, I think that may be the one group of votes th that they actually won, they didn't win it by the, the kind of the mid to low 60% number that they were expected to, mm. to actually be able to carry this. So what happened? Uh, Democrats likely outworked Republicans and not enough Republicans ended up showing up. I, I, I still fear that uh, even with the demographic changes, even with the closer races that are going to be going on in Georgia in the future as well, that the mess of Georgia uh, in the November election, along with their state leadership, which was uh, not, not handling that well, and then some of these people kind of saying, your vote's not going to count, your vote won't matter, so don't go and show up. And, uh, and you put that all together and you get a Democrat wave in, in this in this state, which is not not looking good for uh, for uh, the, I mean the Purdue race is still within the margin, and we don't know what will happen there with the absentee that could take until Friday, uh, and right now it's within the recount margin, but uh, but again, uh, it's still uh, not looking great. Is this a referendum on the Republican leadership in the state, the Secretary of State, Brad Rapsenberger, the governor, uh, Brian Kemp, who was off the campaign trail uh, for the last several days for both these Republican candidates? I think in November, everyone wanted to say, oh, well, you just watch what's going to happen November 3rd. Big referendum on Trumpism. 74 million Americans voted for President Trump, the most Republicans ever gotten in the history of the country, more than Barack Obama right. got in 2008. That was not a referendum. This might be, though. Yeah, I think what we saw was, was two things. One, in November, this was not the state that was at the top, top of the list of issues. Why? Why? Well, we had Senator Perdue running a very strong, well-funded campaign in the state that he was kind of uh, co-tandem running the pro-Trump message out with that. And, of course, well-funded with uh, uh, Kelly Loeffler as well in that jungle primary. But... But at the end of the day, it wasn't North Carolina that was a problem for the Trump campaign. It wasn't Ohio or Florida. Those were those are pretty easy. And the, so were the, the Senate races. It was uh, it was the state. And there's always a surprise. Uh, we've been told it's coming in Georgia. And I think uh, the fruition now is that Georgia Republicans are going to have to retool from, as you said, top down leadership uh, to really get not just good candidates or the funding but they need, they've got to put together a strategy that works. And I, and I think that the, it was a perfect storm for Democrats because of, of this, the, the anger and just the distrust that came out of the November election. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Raphael Warnock, by the way. So last <clears throat> night, uh, he was on stage. Uh, he's the projected winner uh, against Kelly yeah. Leffler. Uh, he was on stage thanking supporters. Take a listen to this. Tonight is a man who knows that the improbable journey that led me to this place in this historic moment in America could only happen here. We were told that we couldn't win this election. But tonight, we prove that with hope, hard work, and the people by our side, anything is possible. What's interesting about the Warnock situation is he'll be back on the ballot in 22 months. He's got to run for that seat again in 2022 right. during the midterms. Uh, along and, and, with he, and, he's a rad, and he's very radical. And I think his radical positions will come out even more so yeah. as a U.S. senator. So I just everybody, you know, take note that even if this does change the balance of power in the U.S. Senate, we've got a chance to, one, take back the House in two years and the Senate in two years, including uh, one of these seats, uh, that Warnock seat, which will be back up. So 
Georgia Republicans, get your act together. Uh, lots of us would like to help you. Yep. And, uh, and let's make sure we've got good candidates, well-funded, but a, the right message and the right strategy, because the Democrats have figured something out that works there in Georgia. Republicans have the people. They've got the potential votes. They've got to turn them out to win. And they, they very well could have a run of things um, in Washington, at least for the next two years, uh, in the House, Senate, yep. and uh, in the White House. Uh, we do want to project right now, uh, Newsmax is projecting, uh, that John Ossoff is the winner over David Perdue. Yep. Uh, over 99% of precincts are reporting. He's got a, a comfortable lead. There are still uh, yep. votes to be counted. Um, but right now, Newsmax is projecting that John Ossoff uh, will be uh, a Democratic senator from the great state of Georgia. I want to get your reaction. So that, that's Georgia. a historic moment because yeah. uh, now you've seen, you will see the, the shift where Joe Biden uh, will likely go into office. We'll see what happens today in the Senate uh, and the House. But, uh, and I know some, some things that may be going on there, but Joe Biden very well could be going into office with the, obviously a Democrat House and now a Democrat a Senate for at least a couple of years. Yeah, this would make Mitch McConnell uh, the uh, Senate Minority leader for the first time in, I believe, six years. Uh, it would also make Kamala Harris the most important vote in the Senate uh, in right. uh, 14 days once uh, once Joe Biden um, is sworn in. Uh, he is the president-elect. I want to pivot to what's happening right now, and I know a lot of people are, are, are tuned into us this morning, and they'll be watching all day with what's happening yep. uh, in Washington. The Electoral College is going to be meeting to certify the election results. 538 votes uh, are out there to be counted. It's only happened twice in history that Congress has actually debated contested electoral votes, um, 1969 and 2005. So how much pressure is on Mike Pence today? Well, I think, uh, first, the, the pressure is on, it's the House and Senate members. They, they, they first uh, have to kind of sign on by each state. So they're read in alphabetical order. They've put in their objection, a House member and at least one Senate member. Uh, then if th their objection's taken, they go and debate for up to two hours in their separate chambers. They have to do that for each state they object to. I'm hearing it's somewhere between three and six states. It, it, will, it will be a combination. If it's three, it's still three that would be outcome determinative. What they are looking to do, and it's very uphill because Democrats control the, the, the House, uh, is to basically send it back to the states for emergency sessions to recertify uh, and look at their elections one more time and their their electoral, whether or not they want to certify those electors. Yeah. But th the likelihood is this, there are not going to be enough votes. I'm, I'm proud of Senator Haggerty from Tennessee and, and, and Senator uh, uh, Cruz and others who are joining this effort because I think the debate is important for the American people to see and hear today because there was so much that was wrong about this presidential election. But there is that other option that, the, that is being taught, discussed. The president's tweeted about it. Could the vice president, as president of the Senate, as a legislator, which is one important constitutional role he has, uh, under, uh, under existing precedent, say, you know what, you've raised these issues. I alone, I'm going to say, you know what, these states need to reconsider this. Now, He's not forced. He's not taking away their votes. He's not disenfranchising anyone. He's just saying you need to go back and recertify. That is something on the table. Jordan, quickly, for quick, Vice wait, President Pitts to do. Uh, it could face legal challenge. Probably will. Yeah. But again, it, it's it's uh, it's something that's there. We don't have a ton of time. Uh, two quick quick questions, and then and then we've got to wrap. Um, the senator from Texas, Ted Cruz, wants there to be a permanent commission in place that is independent yeah. that can look at election integrity. Do you think something like this happens now, finally? I think I think it has to happen. But the problem is, look who just took uh, control of the U.S. Senate, as we ju as we just reported while yeah. while I was yeah. on air. Uh, so I think it becomes that much more difficult to get a commission like that unless they can come up with a real. Uh, bipartisan one, and I'm not sure that's going to be one that's going to look at the problems that Republicans and conservatives are concerned about, which is this push to try, which I think is coming, to basically do universal mail-in voting, uh, and uh, which, again, would be very problematic for, for, for Republicans, but also it becomes much more difficult to then, uh, you know, secure the integrity of the election. So I, I would love a commission like that. I think it's necessary. I'm concerned because we've now, uh, uh, looks like, lost the U.S. Senate. Well, it's going to be interesting. Ted Cruz will be speaking today. Jordan Seculo, thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Another big day in Washington. And we won't give up Washington. the fight. You know what? We're all going to be fighting. It's a two-year battle. 
It's a very slim yeah. margin. They're not going to get through their craziest stuff. We can fight back. People should not just be depressed. Let's keep the fight going. This is what we are made to All do right, as Thank conservatives. You. Appreciate it. Once again, Newsmax is projecting John Ossoff, the winner in Georgia, beating David Perdue, the incumbent. A very close race right now. Just over 16,000 votes separate the two candidates. There are some votes to be counted out there right now, but 99% of the precincts are in, and we are projecting John Ossoff, the winner. Jordan, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. You're watching Wake Up America. Uh, we'll be right back. Stay with us.